Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. And our top story today, the Commonwealth of Virginia launches RetirePath VA to help Virginians save for retirement. Today's show is powered by Virginia 529 and RetirePath VA. To learn more about RetirePath VA, how to enroll in the pilot program, or just find out general information about the program, visit www.retirepath.com. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Angela Antonelli is with the Center for Retirement Initiatives at Georgetown University, and Mary Morris is the Chief Executive Officer of Virginia 529. Angela, Mary, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. I always like uh, to talk to you. Yeah. yeah, this, well, look, this is such an important topic, uh, you know, retirement security in the United States. And Angela, I want to start with you before we get into Mary, uh, get to Mary and, and what's happening in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. What do we know about retirement security here in the United States? Well, it's not very good. Um, unfortunately, far too many Americans have little or nothing saved for retirement. Even if they do have a way to save, they're not saving enough. At Georgetown, we've estimated that there is about half of the private sector workforce, about 57 million American workers who go to work every day and don't have access to a way to save for retirement through their employer. And we know that if you have access to a way to save through your employer, you're 15 times more likely to save for retirement. So that's a significant impact by having access through an employer-sponsored plan. But unfortunately, if you don't have that access, most Americans, even though there are products out there, are not inclined to go open accounts on their own and save on their own. Only about 15% of American workers do that on their own. So it's really important to address this and to offer workers a simple, easy, accessible way to save for retirement. There are a whole lot of reasons why employers today are not able to offer offer plans to their workers. And the reality is employers are not required to offer those plans. But again, that all being said, the fact that so many American workers don't have access to a simple, easy way to save for retirement is something that our system is trying to address today. States are playing a key role in helping to make that happen and offer options that will make it much easier for workers to save. Thanks, Angela. And, and Mary, I want to come to you because are there, you know, Angela references, I think, 57 million Americans that don't have access to a workplace retirement plan. Are there certain vocations or, or jobs or uh, industries where individuals are not able to access retirement security at an employer level? Yeah, you know, we've, we've done the research in Virginia and it has been interesting to me in all of this work how similar these statistics are across the states, even though the states are very different. You know, so the states that are open, what we're finding in Virginia tracks pretty well. Uh, and not too surprisingly, it tends to be smaller businesses. Uh, you know, the larger the business is, they have more resources, they have an HR department, uh, you know, they, they have uh, more mechanized, uh, you know, options for all of their employee benefits. And so they tend to offer a retirement option. And that's where people are taking advantage of it. So smaller employers, um, and then again, in Virginia, but it's not different from other places. Um, there are several industries, um, hospitality and you know, restaurant services, those tend to be underrepresented, um, construction industry, retail sales, um, and agriculture in Virginia, which is big. Those tend to be the ones where it sort of over indexes. They're also ones where you have maybe more not transient workers, but in and out, sometimes more seasonal workers, more part-time workers, uh, lower income generally. So fewer are professionals with higher incomes in those industries. Um, you know, so you find that. And then we also find in terms of who's underrepresented in retirement savings does tend to over-index for women. 
uh, and a lot of women are our small business owners, I think all over the country, but I, I know Virginia best. And when we did our work, a lot of our respondents to our survey were, were female owned businesses uh, and, and, and then minorities um, tend to under index and, and be the ones that are being left out of retirement savings. So obviously this is hitting sitting, hitting, excuse me, certain groups more than others and certain industries more than others. Angela, let me come back to you because when we spoke with you uh, several years ago, a lot of the states were doing some great work there. Here we are a few years later. Where are states in providing solutions uh, to, re to providing retirement security? It's exciting to see the, the number of states that have adopted programs like what we see with Retire Path in Virginia and leaders <clears throat> like Gary Morris. Um, the reality is for states, the cost, what policymakers have come to understand is that the cost of doing nothing is not an option. It's not an option because the fiscal and economic consequences of a rapidly aging population that has not saved enough for retirement is something that we must address. Today, already one in five elderly households rely on Social Security for more than 90 percent of their income. And again, we have our population over the next 10, 20 years. Uh, a significant sort of silver tsunami that's coming. And we need to make sure our younger generations are more prepared and understand the importance of saving and that saving even small amounts of money can make a significant difference. You know, state policymakers have understood this over the past decade. What's been exciting here at Georgetown working with the states is to see that 46 out of 50 states have at some point considered some some kind of legislative proposal examining the importance of strengthening retirement security and these types of savings programs. And what's really exciting is that we have 16 states that now have adopted these types of savings programs with a potential, I mentioned 57 million who don't have access, to reach about 20 million, almost half of those workers. So in a short period of time, where for decades we've not been able to close the access gap, I think with states and what we see innovation in the private sector, we finally can get excited and I think have the possibility of making significant progress to close that access gap. And what we now see happening is just with three of the states, so we've still got a lot of other states to come on board, including the state of Virginia, reaching and helping workers there, but we've already crossed $500 million in assets in just these three states, and they're still onboarding employers with more than 600,000 new savers. So to think about the fact that just within the past two or three years, more than a half a million Americans are starting to save for retirement where they perhaps otherwise wouldn't. And we know from surveys in some of these states that they feel more financially secure, even having a small amount of money put away for savings. This is a major accomplishment and states have been leading this way because again, they understand that the current status quo, that the status quo is just not sustainable over the long term and has significant fiscal and economic consequences for us. And, and Angela, I have to agree on everything you, you, you said. And I also agree that Mary is a leader in the industry. And, and, and I think you are as well. Uh, both of you have been leading in so many different ways when it comes to retirement and helping to solve this problem. Uh, Mary, you, Virginia has a very successful 529 program uh, let me ask you, just point blank, why does Virginia need a state-facilitated retirement program? Well, all the reasons that Angela's are already articulated, and I will say, I've been following this for probably a dozen years um, and really leveraging the work that Angela and the Georgetown Retirement Center have done, which is amazing. Uh, and, and was reached out, I would say the AARP has been a big proponent of these programs and they reached out to us in Virginia a long time ago when I was really just getting my feet wet on 529 programs. So in terms of seeing what the states can do on big policies like this, I think 529 programs and ABLE programs are, are a way to see how that can impact it. Federal government may try things, but the state can be an incubator for good ideas and do things a little bit differently in each state. And we work so well collaboratively and Angela and Georgetown have really pulled the states together that we've just learned a ton. And so our research shows a lot of what we're seeing in other states. And, and we've learned a lot from that. But we've surveyed this and really done reports in Virginia three times. So it has been in front of our legislature um, at least since the mid 20, like 2014, I think. 
um, and probably before that it was talked about, but it actually got a push. There was one study that was just really of a survey, the landscape study, people were thinking about it. There was another one. And then finally in you know 2019 and 2020 in that legislature, uh, we were tasked at Virginia 529 with, with doing a full report. And from that, we got a lot of the data that shows again, the same things that are happening in other states. Over 1.2, I'm going to guess it's even closer to 1.5 million Virginians today don't have access to a workforce retirement option. <clears throat> uh, things that I've learned that over 40 years with the federal government trying to incentivize and to get employers to participate, the needle hasn't moved. So I think there are some who look and say, why are the states doing this? And it's like, because nothing else has worked. Um, and we're seeing with five or 600,000 new people saving and states really stepping up, we're going to make a difference um, and you're going to find different ways to do it. And so, you know, we've done the surveys, uh, you know, what we, with the help, help of Pew uh, Trusts, which has been a great partner, I know, with the center and have done a lot in this space as well. There are a lot of folks who've been working from, for many more years than I have on this. Um, and one of their partners, ESI, we did a, a cost of doing nothing study. And that's really powerful to the states, you know, not doing anything, not solving this problem will cost in Virginia, I think it was $12 billion over the next 15 years in people needing more state and federal support programs, you know, and having to tap in because they are simply going to retire without enough resources to sustain you know, a, a reasonable lifestyle. So, so that's the kind of data that we looked at. And then, you know, really the General Assembly stepped up and in 20, um, 2021 passed legislation that authorized uh, Virginia 529 to start this program. And I think they looked to us because we do, ha do run a successful 529 program. Hopefully we know how to do the outreach and, and to reach the employers and the employees um, with the message and to make it simple and cost effective to get started and, and really get on that pathway to financial health. Yeah, and, and Angela, I wanna throw the last question to you. Uh, Mary laid out a very key case for Virginia offering a plan. And when you look at the different plan structures out there, whether it's California, Oregon, Illinois, the others you mentioned, there's a couple different ways uh, to, uh, I guess, fund or create a structure for a plan but most select the auto IRA method, and that's what Virginia has done. Could you help break down what, what that structure is, what it means, and what it means for Virginians? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, the auto IRA model is the model that we're seeing, as you said, adopted by more states. So of the 16 states, 11 of them have the auto IRA model, but quite honestly, some of the states that don't are, are looking at adopting a model similar to what we see in Virginia. And you know, the reality is over time, there's been experience with these programs and the auto IRA program, quite honestly, is the one that I think is the most effective in terms of reaching and covering and engaging and the getting the highest level of participation, but from the greatest number of workers. And that's really what you want to see. You want to be able to reach as many workers as possible and create as many new savers as possible. And, you know, there are reasons why that's the case, because in the design of these programs. So, you know, to be clear, employers are not uh, employers can certainly go out and adopt a plan in the private marketplace. But again, there are a variety of reasons why they don't do that and are not doing that. So the states are really creating a very simple, easy, low cost way to help. Essentially, we call it state facilitated because the state is in fact facilitating the savings of a worker. Um, through their employer. So it's making it as easy as possible, keeping all of the, essentially all of the burden off of the employer, making it as easy as possible to help that worker save the worker to an individual retirement account and IRA and doing that. And so, you know, employers are helping to facilitate that through the auto IRA model. To be clear, it's always voluntary for the employee. If they can't save, they can they can choose to opt out. So they're auto enrolled into the program to begin the saving process. But again, to be clear, it's voluntary and they can change their mind and opt out of the program and choose not to save. So it's always voluntary for them. Um, and again, when we do that and what we see in the states is a high level of those who are auto enrolled, 
are staying in the program. They are beginning to save. And in fact, we have these programs also have auto escalation features, many of them. And that's about a 1% increase year over year. And so in a state like Oregon and Oregon Saves, there are some workers now who are saving at a 9% level every year. And that's really exciting to see them putting that kind of money away. And it's important because they're saving through these programs. They're, they might be saving a modest amount, maybe $100 a month on average is what we're seeing. But again, that $100 a month, what is so important to understand is the power of time and compound interest. And we've done analysis at Georgetown, again, that's looked at if you're 25 years old and you start to put $100 a week, uh, a month away, and you do that consistently, just that modest amount, you're going to accrue a significant balance that can lead to significant supplemental income in retirement. And so that's a great income addition to your social security benefit even more it might help you delay claiming social to be able to wait and get an even larger social security benefit and even if you start later at age 45 and start saving we analyze that and it still can add up to a significant enough amount to again to be important supplemental income at the time of retirement so beginning to save save early start saving when you're young you can save a small amount but more than likely, you know, this is going to be a gateway to you moving into a 401k with an employer later on, potentially, and you're going to be able to save more. But this gets you started saving and saving as early as possible makes an enormous difference over the long run. Yeah. And you make it sound so easy. Um, and, and really, it, it is for these employers. And so you can see the experience already in some of these other states. And I think the experience will be similar and you'll be learning from what the other states did, Mary, in Virginia. Ladies, we're gonna to have to leave it there. Uh, you, in my opinion, you both deserve the, uh, the equivalent of an Oscar in the retirement industry. Uh, not even like best supporting actor, but for a lead actor. Angela great, and Mary, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. Well, thank you, Angela and Mary. And when we come back, we take a closer look at Retire Path VA. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We wanna make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-504-8194. Welcome back. A reminder that this show is powered by Virginia 529 and Retire Path VA. To learn more about Retire Path VA, how to sign up for the pilot program, and just to answer some general questions 
visit www.retirepathva.com. And we're going to welcome back to the program, Mary Morris of Virginia 529. And welcome to the program, Peter Thompson of Retire Path VA. Mary, Peter, thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you, Jeffrey. I'm glad to be able to join you and Mary this morning and talk a little bit more about Retire Path Virginia and the work that we're doing here. Yeah, and it's great. It's great work. And Mary, I want to start with you because in our last segment, I mean, I think there is a very important case for states um, and municipalities to help facilitate retirement plans. I think there's no doubt there. And you, you and Angela were able to lay out the economic costs. But I want to ask Virginia 529, which I said is a very successful 529 program. Why was Virginia 529 selected to facilitate and administer this plan, this new plan? I yeah, say. I think there are a few reasons. One, I think I said, we've been following this for a while. Uh, and, you know, we know we know how to do outreach. We, we do retail accounts. We work with families. We work with individuals on um, their financial planning and setting goals and dreaming and saving. And, and you know, dream, save, achieve is our, is our motto and our mission. It works for a lot of reasons. Um, so we volunteered, quite honestly. We stepped up in 2020 and said we would do a full-blown study. Um, we'd just been following it. It felt like the timing was right. And so we looked at a lot of different things. We And we'll get to that more, I'm sure. We, we surveyed employers, employees. And it was a challenging year to do a, a report like that, I will tell you, but our team really dug in, did a great job, um, did the work, worked with Georgetown, worked with Pew, worked with some other great partners. And um, and we also looked at what models might look like. And so, you know, we tried to, to sort of throw it out to the General Assembly to say, you could create a whole new entity. And that's what some states have done, but that requires a full infrastructure and that's going to be more expensive and it's probably going to be slower, but you could do that. You could look to a, a state treasury department. Some states have put it there. Uh, you know, they manage money, but they haven't worked with outreach to individuals and to the private sector. Um, maybe you could have looked to the Virginia retirement system. That makes some sense, but there's some statutory things that hit, prohibit that. And we said, oh, you can look to Virginia 529. I know that it's not college savings, but you know, because we have some infrastructure, we have investment expertise, all of those things. And the General Assembly decided to go with us and, and we were pleased to do it because we really do feel like this fits with our mission um, and, and that is financial wellness generally. And so we're broadening. We'll see over the next couple of years once we open this program, we hope that we'll have a little bit more of an umbrella so people will see us not just as education savings. We also do disability savings through federally um, tax advantaged ABLE programs, as well as now Retire Path Virginia. So, um, you know, we feel like we can just be a sort of a full stop place for folks to get some important financial education lessons um, and, and to put themselves on a, on a path to better financial wellness. And, and you've got the track, the proven track record, as you said, through Virginia 529. I mean, it's probably one of the largest, if not the largest 529 program. So that, you know, you guys know what you're doing. Before I move on to Peter, Mary, uh, when's the, uh, the start date? for Retire Path. So we, we are gearing up. Peter has done such a great job and the rest of the team. It's Retire Path Virginia is our name. Um, we are on track to open wide, as I say. We're open sort of to everybody July 1, 2023. Uh, but we'll be opening sometime in the first quarter of 2023 with a pilot program. And honestly, I think I said earlier when we talked, we uh, have gone to gone to school on the other states that have done this before and pilots seem to work. It's a way to work out some kinks in, in the program to make sure that you've got the right interface with our employers and our employees. And it gives us some stories to tell as we go out more broadly to employers. So um, if anybody listens to this, we are looking actively right now for some employers across the Commonwealth who will participate in a pilot. We'll do a little bit more handholding and ask them questions and, and get some feedback to make sure that we have the absolute best, easiest, you know, error-free, uh, just everyone's happy to participate program by the time we open on in July of 2023. And, and Peter, I want to come to you. Uh, sure. Mary kind of laid out the broad brush strokes, but I want to come to you and, and some details as well. So we'll give her a short shrift here. Uh, but what do Virginia employers need to know in in light of the January or July first, twenty twenty three, and the pilot program, what do employers need to know about why Virginia Retire Path? 
Sure, Jeffrey. No, that's a, a great question and, and a good place for me to start. And, you know, retire path will be mandatory for certain private sector Virginia employers. Um, you know, fortunately for us, as Mary mentioned, you know, looking to other state programs, uh, that includes uh, here and with our program, uh, that will include for-profit and non-profit businesses uh, will be required to register and, and facilitate Retired Path Virginia. Now, unlike the other states, our employer threshold is 25 or more eligible employees. Uh, but again, if they've been in operation for two or more years uh, and do not already offer uh, an employer-sponsored or qualified retirement plan, uh, they will be, again, uh, required to facilitate the program. Now, many of the employers uh, that will participate will come from industries that uh, typically or traditionally don't offer benefits. Uh, and uh, we've received some you know, recent information that just kind of bears that out, even in light of the uh, pandemic. But retail, hospitality, construction, agriculture, and, and other service industries. The, yeah. the, goal, uh, the goal here, Jeffrey, and, and I, uh, it, is really to make it easy uh, and simple for employers to facilitate and, and help their employees. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump on you. you know, it's so hard sometimes uh, to see when someone's done. You know, when you're in person, you look at the body language, you can say they're done. So I apologize on that. Don't want to give you a uh, cut into your, uh, your, your comments. Mary, um, we talked about this with Angela in, in, in the first segment, and by and large, I, I can't find an employer that, at, at, or I haven't heard from an employer in California, Illinois, some of these other states that don't want this. Do Virginia employers support Virginia Retire Path? They do. Uh, yeah, again, we did a survey and it was a pretty decent survey. We got a lot of responses. We followed up. We talked to a lot of employers as well as having them fill out um, surveys. And we also talked to employees. And by and large, 75 to 80 percent of employers and employees think it's a good idea, think that retirement savings options should be offered in the workplace. Um, you know, they, for the employers, what was really key, they wanted it to be easy. They really were concerned about the fiduciary responsibility that they, you know, worried if they picked a plan themselves. So when the questions were asked, you know, if, if you don't have a fiduciary responsibility and you don't have, to, it's not going to cost you a bunch of money, then they thought it was a really great idea, um, which is what we find with our 529 programs. So I think there's a lot of support for that. Again, they know it's good for themselves. I think a lot of employers, again, smaller businesses aren't saving themselves and they know that they and their employees could benefit from it. Uh, and the employees said the same thing. They were, you know, a good percentage were highly likely to participate if it were offered through their employer. We know people trust their employers. So somehow, even though there's not that relationship, they figure if it's offered through them, um, they'll, they'll follow that. And you know, what we're hoping is that we'll find what's happened in the states that are open, almost 70% of individuals stick with the program. You know, as Angela said earlier, you always have the option to opt out. You can start and opt out later. You don't have to do auto increases. You don't have to start with the defaults that we have, you know, all those things. But a big majority see the benefit and stay with the program. And I think that's a really powerful message. Absolutely, it's powerful. Um, and in terms of getting positive retirement savings, Peter, uh, let's get down to some brass tax here, or 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 I don't know, whatever tax. Uh, how do how do businesses in Virginia facilitate registering for retirement path? It, it, just based on the, the the what Mary and the five two nine team has done in in automating a lot of that, I have to feel that I have to think that. It's automated as well for Retire Path. Yeah, and, and uh, as Mary mentioned, Jeffrey, uh, Retire Path uh, Virginia is scheduled to launch in, in mid 2023. Uh, we're working uh, currently uh, to determine uh, what registration will look like, but we'll, in all likelihood, implement a uh, phased registration for eligible Virginia employers. Uh, and similar to the other uh, programs we administer, Jeffrey. Uh, Retire Path will also be a public-private partnership. So we're working with third-party or private sector uh, leaders in the space, uh, Veswell, uh, in partnership with Bank of New York Mellon uh, for program administration, uh, and then BlackRock uh, for investment management. 
But again, once a timeline is available, uh, we will notify eligible employers of the registration dates uh, and deadline starting in, in 2023. Now, anyone who's interested can subscribe to program news and updates on our website, which is retirepathva.com. Uh, that website is currently live. Uh, and again, as Mary mentioned earlier, prior to the statewide launch in July or in the summer of uh, 2023, uh, we're also uh, looking for employers who may be interested in participating in our pilot and we're scheduled to start that in, in early 2023. Absolutely exciting times. Now let me ask you, Peter, about workers, because if I'm a worker and I don't have a retirement plan, I'm, I, I wanna sign up right now, because if I can just get access, and I'm not in Virginia, I'm in North Carolina, um, but how, what, what do workers need to know? What do employees need to know about this program? Well, well, one of the things we found as part of the study that was done in 2020, Jeffrey, is we know that people are 15 times more likely to save for retirement if they have access to a payroll deduction plan at work. Uh, our goal here is to help increase access to retirement savings and close that retirement savings gap. Uh, now, for Virginia workers, uh, Retire Path is designed to be voluntary and flexible. Uh, when an employer facilitates the program, eligible employees will be automatically enrolled with the default savings uh, and investment options. Uh, as Mary just recently mentioned, uh, you know, an, in, an employee can also customize their account. Uh, if, you know, if the default savings and investment options are something other than what they would like to establish, uh, they can customize their account, establish a contribution rate and select from uh, the investment options that are available. Uh, the account belongs to the employee. That was one of the things that came out, or one of the findings that came out of the employee survey that we did back in 2020. Uh, you know, it was very important for employees to feel as if they controlled and owned their account. Uh, and the account does belong to them. So if they change jobs in the future, it's portable. It goes with them wherever they go. Uh, for many savers, this will be their first retirement account. Uh, and so financial education will be a critical component to Retire Path Virginia as well. Mary, I want to kind of close out the segment. Uh, you've been both have been great um, today joining us to explain Virginia uh, Retire Path. But let me ask you just you mentioned all the great successes of 529, Virginia 529 with the ABLE account and, and just getting education savings, where does this program, how does it support the mission of Virginia 529? Yeah, you know, it really it really fills us out, I think. You, you would ever, any survey I've had when we were just doing education savings, any survey I've ever seen of, of adults, what are the two things that you worry about the most? What do you want to save for? What do you worry about into the future? Retirement savings and paying for college for my kids or myself. Um, mostly it's for the kids and those types of surveys of adults. Um, able savings, if you have a disability or a loved one with a disability, then I'm going to add that to the list. So this allows us to hit those top three things that families across the country, across the Commonwealth of Virginia worry about. These are the kitchen table types of issues that keep people up at night and they think, oh my God, you know, magical thinking, maybe something magical will happen that will make this better in the future. I'll win the lottery or my kid's going to get a scholarship, whatever. And we try to just take it down and say, you can have dreams, but you need to save, you need to plan, you need, and then you can achieve. And so it all fits into that. And, you know, one of the things when we talk about employers and employees, we are going out, Peter and his team, and I've been doing, I love to talk to, to folks about this program and, and all of this. Um, and we've said, it's our job to make this work, to make it easy, to make it simple for the employers, to make it simple for the employees, to give the education that they need. And we think that's a part of our mission too, right? When I went back to that, we have always spent a lot of time on financial education. We work with junior achievement. We work with high school kids. We work with the Virginia Council on Economic Education. We have always done that with this baseline need for more financially aware 
humans, <laughs> citizens, you know, whether it's kids, adults, everybody can do a better job. And so we don't want to preach to them. We don't want to say we have all the answers. It's just we're on a path. We're on a journey together. And with us, with our umbrella, with all these types of savings, it's all about thinking what works for you, what's important, how do you secure your future, your children's future, how do you have a better life? And so we think that Retire Path Virginia fits right in with, um, you know, Virginia 529, our Invest 529 program, our College America program, our ABLE Now, and our ABLE America programs. Um, you know, that, that's what we think we do well. We can do the outreach. We want to talk to people. We want to help them. Uh, we want to provide as much education and information as we can. And, um, and hopefully it will be, you know, a trans transformational change is what we're looking at, um, whether that's access to education of all kinds, access to retirement savings, um, you know, access to the American dream, I guess. Yeah, well, certainly, I, I think I have to say from the outside looking in, I think uh, Virginians are certainly in great hands. Mary, Peter, we're going to have to leave it there. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning and talking about Retire Path and retirement in general. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. It's always great to be with you. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more and all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, or visit our website. And of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRNAM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts, so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.